Okay. Shana, thank you for joining me. Very happy to be here talking to you, Ryan. Uh, it, it's an honor. And you know, the thing I think about you is what you've done so quickly when thinking about generative AI and into the PC realm. Like, what has kept you, you know, keeping going? I think there's maybe two answers to that question. I think the first answer is a little bit about our company. I think Qualcomm has always been all about innovation. It's uh, basically that's what drives the company forward. It's a little bit of our history, how we started in the map and how we keep reinventing ourselves. And, and uh, we fought this about 10 years ago, thinking how we create a fundamental disruption in an AI engine, because AI is gonna be the new computing. And uh, I think that started to pay off, uh, how we look at now AI coming to the devices at the edge. I think the second part of the answer, Qualcomm has been on a journey to, to diversify ourselves. Well, we realize actually over a number of years, we've been, compared to all of the other peers, we've been super focused on mobile. Most people think of Qualcomm and they look at our name, Qualcomm means quality communications. They think that's a comms company, it's a cellular company, it's the 4G company, it's the 5G company. But the reality is we're more of a computing company than we have been in cellular. And we realize there's so many new end markets for our technology. And as we focus, okay, let's go play in auto, let's go play in PCs, let's go play in the spatial computing, let's go to industrial, um, it actually drove us to say, we have to use this opportunity to change those markets with incredibly performance of AI running at the edge for this AI revolution. Let's bring it everywhere and uh, and how we make everything connected. And I think that's even how we change how we talk about the company, which is intelligent computing yeah. everywhere. Well, you're very humble because what you've done over there, you've changed the culture as a, from a leadership team to be able to get disruption to occur. What are some leadership traits that you, you would be so proud of your team to make sure this disruption continues to happen, which you've done? Those things are never easy. Yeah, uh, I know. That's what... They're never easy. <laughs> and especially if you're doing something for so many years and you just want to repeat, you want to rinse and repeat. Um, so uh, I'll take a couple things, exactly how I think about managing the organization. I think, first of all, uh, being humble to understand we know this, this thing we need to learn about it. Uh, you know, the biggest, the biggest threat to companies, they're trying to transform themselves and learn new core competences is you don't know what you don't know. So be humble, be open to learn, be open to understand. Second thing, surround yourself with people that are going to be much better than than you yeah. are, are doing things. And then I think the, the number three is don't be afraid to take risk. It, you may not get it all, all right in the first time. As long as you have a vision, you just keep going and things are gonna work out. Well, I think that's what makes you one of the top voices. And this term that I've heard, hybrid AI, uh, from you. You know, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll try to even talk about it in the keynote about this. When you step outside and you look at the evolution of computing, right? And uh, computing starts in the mainframe, starts in the yeah. cloud, and then the existence of the PC, the personal computer, and then the smartphone, the computer in the palm of your hand, it's about computing gets really scale when yeah. it gets distributed to everything. And, and I think that's not gonna be different in AI if you think that's the new form of computing. And what hybrid AI does is actually bring the, the unique thing about AI as a predictor a predictor of what you want to do, a predictor of things. It brings closer to you. For example, if you're doing a query on a large language model, that context of that query, it's much better when you actually do on the device at the edge. Because if I'm going into a browser and I go in and I to that box and I type something, at the edge, I know this is Ryan. Yeah. This is what Ryan was doing before. This is the context that he is that I can give him a much more precise answer because I know what he wants. The second part of hybrid AI, it's creating this l large computer that the cloud plus the device is at the edge. And, and even when you think about going a little bit technical, when you think about a large language model and you try to generate tokens, the device can give the cloud a head start. And with that, you actually do things in a more efficient way, don't test the cloud so much, and you reduce latency, which is kind of one thing you wanted to have an immediate response. So I only see benefits. I don't see any downsides. Hybrid AI is the future.
but it's game changing in essence is what you're saying. It's we're not going backwards, we're going forward. And I think you and on that too, you were talking about co-engineering things with HP as well, right? Yes. Anything that you can share? You know, when I think about it, and that's part of the conversation we just had, uh, it's, it's more than just talking about the AI PC. How can we actually make AI PC a reality and make it meaningful to the HP customers? And that's all about bringing those new experiences to life. So I think we'll be in working with them on this journey. Can we make an incredible device that is gonna have the, more attra the most attractive form factor and better life, but at the same time, it's actually the fastest device you ever had in the ability to run AI uh, every day for everything. And I think that's, that's the design goal and that's what we're working together today. Well, I think when you say meaningful, meaningful AI is part of the reason why you're termed the hybrid AI that I think has that embedded in, in with what you're doing and the passion that I, I see. So I got to ask you, we're in Vegas, you know, out there in the casinos, everyone's putting bets and going all in. In the tech world, what is the bold bet that you're making for Qualcomm moving forward that you feel like this is something that you want to stand on and, and feel like you're going to execute as well as a team. I'll start answering this question, Ryan, by giving you an example. So Love it. we just came from Mobile World Congress mm -hmm. right, in Barcelona. I, I lost count how many times I've been there since the days of 2G. <laughs> and what do we usually do, Qualcomm, a company like Qualcomm, what we will usually do in Barcelona? We go in and we announce a new cellular modem. And we did that. But that usually our big announcement is we have this new 4G, this new 5G device, and we did that. But that's not what was front and center of Mobile Congress this, this time. It was the AI hub, uh. where we have 75 models already optimized, available uh, to run on all the devices at the edge, including PCs. Somebody called, I didn't call it, somebody in the press said, this is the first AI app store we have seen, and this is CUDA for the edge, which I thought was a very bold statement. So the way I think about it, that's the bet. AI at the edge is gonna transform our company. So I got a couple more seconds with you, if it's okay. We'll play this game, Ryan's yes. curious. So one word or one sentence, all right? Yes. You ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. The future of AI is? Snapdragon. <laughs> Why did I know you were going to say, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, everyone's high-fiving in the background. They, you can't see them. That's awesome. I like that. So what, when I say the word, all right, what's the first thing that pops up in your mind? You ready? The word amplify. It's about bringing the next generation experiences to consumers and what they've been waiting for. <laughs> I love that. Thank I appreciate you. you, man. Thank you, Ryan.